Hey, uh, it is late. I sh I'm also not shooting this on. I'm shooting this on a webcam. Uh, I just wanted to quickly do this because I feel like I need to break the seal so I can get back to making things again. Um, I, I wanted to talk a bit about where I've been. There's not a ton to say. A pandemic happened, I guess, is the main thing. I've had issues uh, my entire life. I'm, many of you will be happy to know that I still have my cat, uh, if that was a question you were wondering. She still acts the exact goddamn same. One issue I've always had on this channel um, is that I always wanted the next thing to be bigger and uh, and and better. I wanted to keep pushing myself. Um, which is why, when you look at the beginning of this channel, you look at the initial Smash Talks, they were real bad. Uh, and I mean, you might like some of the stuff I said in them, or whatever, you might have enjoyed them, but like, those things were shot on my roommate's, like, not not like video production capable laptop uh those things would be shot and edited within the course of like two or three hours uh because i would use it while he was at class but then i started making like actual things i started teaching myself how to edit like when i started the channel i had no idea how to make any anything really uh, i'm not claiming i'm that much better now but i mean no i'm better now i was just happy to make things i think was 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 the main thing and so I would just kind of put anything out there you've got to stop hitting the mic specifically please but over time I got more ambitious with what I did and you know there's a period of time where I was like oh I want to be a youtuber which <laughs> god no dumb idea that was that was a very young 20s Chris I know enough youtubers now that uh, I'm very confident I don't want their life I admire a lot of them I could not handle uh, living the way that they have to live. I also feel like it would ruin it for me. I've gone through waves of productivity uh, on this channel, a lot of it coinciding with changes in life events, what my work schedule was like, uh, my own personal growth as a person, uh, the stuff I was interested in making, things that were happening at the time, uh, all that jazz. You can kind of see me kind of growing into being somebody who wanted to do video and film work, like for a living. Uh, not through YouTube, but I would use this channel to kind of work on a lot of skills. The fact that Todd Howard ASMR was genuinely, one, an inside joke for my friends on Discord, uh, but two, uh, an exercise in sound design. I made my content for a lot of reasons, and they would change over the years, but there's always a very constant, like, I wanted to keep pushing myself thing. And then I made an actual short film. And it became very hard for me to just put out things like this after uh, and I got much more um, stressed about uh, wanting to make something that felt like completely professionally done uh, all the time uh, I gave myself grace for smash talk um, when we brought that back and I think that was because I was like no this is like a fun thing the point of this is to uh, do something similar to what I did literally over a decade ago now at this point which is wild to think about and it's also an excuse to talk to Isaac more um and so I was able to kind of like let that slide for a bit it has been over two years since I put an actual like finished project on this channel uh and I literally was in the process of working on that for like a year if not more and it's not like I was working on it solidly it's not a thing where it's like oh I'm spending hours tweaking it it was that I would spend weeks like thinking about it and being afraid to work on it because what if I screwed it up when I actually decided to do it was like when I was off work for the holidays basically and then I kind of did really the majority of of the work on actually like editing the thing together over the course of like three days like the actual time spent literally doing the work was not that long People responded well to it, but there was also just like a couple things that I was like, screwed that up, that should be different, and that killed me. And I'm trying to figure out how to stop doing that with everything I make. I have, I still get intensely uncomfortable watching Uncle Gareth with people, uh, my, my short film. Um, I have just like a visceral fear of being around somebody while they're watching it i know i look at that that thing was put together professionally it's it's pretty well done 
I just see the stuff that I think I could have actually done better. And it sucks. And I want to stop thinking like that. But it is the way that my brain works. At least currently. And I didn't used to be this bad about it. I don't know why it got worse for me over time. All this is to say, it has been over two years since I've put a thing on this channel. And there's been like a lot of life changes uh, in that time. If you have watched my content in general up to this point, you've probably noticed I've got a very different background now, and that is because, yes, I have moved. Uh, I was in the same apartment for eight years, I think. Um, a solid chunk of everything I did on YouTube was done in that apartment. And I have a lot of things to say about that process, and I was actually filming stuff to make a video talking about that process and leaving that thing behind and then I was just hit with a paralysis maybe I'll talk more about that in depth at some point um I've been through a lot of life changes I live on my own now and I think it actually makes it harder for me to motivate myself because I think I get stuck uh beating myself up a lot more not extremely bad but just like in the moods where it's like you just kind of get up like already worried about things feeling like a piece of shit um hating my body, feeling like I don't deserve any of the stuff that I've gotten, worrying about my competency, worrying about whether I'm a good person, uh, all, the, all, the, all the greatest hits, you know? Uh, a good amount of stuff that I've talked about on here, um, a lot of stuff that I want to talk about more. Uh, so, you know, moving in my own place, and then also the pandemic happening, all that stuff overlapping on each other, um, it was a rough time. And I think a thing happened where I was acknowledging that uh, this was a traumatic experience for everybody, that the pandemic was a tough thing, and that it was very dumb to expect people to be as productive and as creative uh, as they were. At the same time, I also got really mad at myself because I wanted to be somebody who uh, rose above that and made things anyway and stayed motivated and uh, I, I guess helped people cope with isolation and lockdown and stuff. And I put out the Slime Rancher video, but that wasn't a thing that was made for the pandemic. It certainly took on uh, extra meaning uh, over the course of that, but I was working on that before lockdown before we'd even heard of COVID. I genuinely think I was working on that in 2019. And that's the thing here. I've got like five scripts that I've been developing some since 2018. I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to get myself to just make things again. The, the reason I told myself I didn't want to actually be a YouTuber uh, was because I know that I would put this pressure on myself that would stop me from creating. I would get myself in my head. This needed to stay a fun hobby. And I went and I did it anyways. And the reality is I've been, like, afraid to acknowledge the channel or make contact with it because of how long it had been since I'd done anything. Um, that had just made it, like, even worse, and that was building up, which is dumb because then it's just exacerbating the problem I'm having. But if humans were rational creatures, there wouldn't be any reason to make art. So uh, I think, like a lot of people, um, I look back at the last couple of years and uh, definitely feel like, yeah, those were some of the worst years of my life. I felt like I have been in the worst year of my life going on like three years now. And it's, it's all felt like the same year. There's definitely been just like a kind of uh, desperate search for relief. And buddy, uh, it has not been coming. It's not like any of the feelings are entirely new to me, but I think just the, um, the stretches of bad days just definitely were much longer and more frequent uh, than they used to be. And, you know, some of these things are getting better. Uh, some of them are not. Uh, I am having the toughest time financially that I've had in a very long time. But among all this stuff, uh, this channel and my creative endeavors, for some reason, have been feeling like another burden on top of all that stuff. Instead of the escape that it's supposed to be, the joy that I would feel when I would make things, you know? It's been very hard to have that. I don't know if part of it was opening a Patreon. When I did the Patreon, I was thinking, it's okay, it's not going to get very big, it'll just be a couple people who want to 
uh, support my work. It's not the same thing as it being a job. It'll be okay. I won't stress myself out. But I think I did end up mentally stressing myself out anyways. Because uh, de definitely when I think back to it, it's like, man, for the people who were supporting, which, sure, it wasn't many, but, uh, you know, for that, for each of those individual people, it wasn't nothing. Uh, and I produced very little uh, during that time. And I think I do feel like I owe something to the people who did support it, and I'm very thankful. And I feel like I need to shut down the Patreon because I just feel guilty about my output in regards to it and everything. But I think anybody who has supported me uh, in that sense, you've got just like kind of a lifetime of behind the scenes access to stuff, I think. Like, I. I Advanced. Like, it's, it's the same way that I feel about people who backed like my short film Kickstarter. Any films I make in the future, I'm just gonna gonna be like, hey, you want to see like, you want to see this in advance? You want to like I, if you support any of my stuff, like I, I don't know, it 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 means a lot. Post Gareth, I had this massive like depressive episode where I was worried that. Uh, all this, all this cast and crew that had given their time to, like, making this thing, that they had all done something just phenomenal for me in uh, letting me make this film, because I genuinely could not have done it without any of them. Not even just in the sense of I needed Body's Way, but, like, I genuinely think the reason that Gareth came out well was because I did genuinely very little on it. And I think that's just the way that filmmaking in general is supposed to work. Why would I try to pull rank on the DP over what we should do with a shot. You know? That's somebody who literally, their livelihood, their career, their life purpose, has been to figure out the best way to convert a script into visuals. I will absolutely tell them this is how I want it to feel, this is the thing I'm trying to get across. I think this kind of shot will work for it. Uh, if they agree with it, cool. If they, if they don't, they probably know better. Um... So, like, a lot of that filmmaking process was getting people to fill in the gaps and all the stuff that I was, like, knew that I was not good at and just let them do it. A lot of people uh, gave me a lot of their time, and I paid them, but probably not enough. And, you know, and it wasn't a thing I was going to make money on, but it's... I got to make this thing. So I was very worried about, you know, having been a good enough director to actually... Uh, have put a thing together that actually was going to make use of all their talents and produce something that it was just like great genuinely the happiest i ever feel is when i'm making this stuff and anybody who helps enable that i just feel like an intense debt to and then also i think because this stuff makes me so happy i tie up all this guilt and shame in it and it's dumb and i hate it and i should stop it i want to be making these things i should just be making them which is why i'm doing this now and i know that it looks bad i know it probably doesn't sound very good uh, but I just, I need to get something out. I need to break the silence. I need to communicate somewhat. I want to make things again. I realized going into, like, this new year, um, I didn't make anything for me last year. I would barely even say I made anything for me in 2021. Part of the problem is that, uh, a lot of the stuff that I want to do is to do larger, uh, cinematic things that kind of feel like short films. Uh, that got really hard to do for a couple years there for some reason. It's also just very hard to uh, do something on the scale of a short film for a YouTube video. Uh, it's much harder to pull on favors there. And, like, I'm not going to raise a bunch of money to get gear for uh, for a YouTube video. So, and it's funny because the last two years, uh, because of the job I work now, I have created more video content than I've ever made in my life. Just... None of it was for me, you know? And I enjoyed a lot of it, uh, but it's not serving the goals that I want out of my life creatively. I'm giving myself permission to do lower effort things. Uh, I was thinking it might be fun to just do a video going through my Steam replay and just kind of reflecting on what I played last year. Uh, and maybe I throw in like the Nintendo one as well. Everything that lets me see kind of what I played across all the systems I have and all that. I also want to uh, make any of these five things that I've had sitting in Google Docs for 
years. And I've been like slowly iterating on every couple months. I'll get in and I'll like add a couple paragraphs or just reread and edit things. Because another thing is, when you spend a long time making something, you're constantly changing as a person. And I would say that like, if I look at a script like a year after I wrote it, it doesn't sound like me anymore. I'm a very different person now than I think anything you've seen on this channel. Um, you know, I've gone through what the last couple of years have been like. So there's the way the pandemic has changed me. Uh, there's the way my new uh, job has changed me. Um, there's uh, the ways that living on my own has changed me. There's just the way that aging changes people naturally. There's a way that stuff that has happened politically has changed me. Uh, there's just a lot. People are constantly changing. I have a lot of very interesting things to say, I think. It's hard, and then I feel like an immediate... Like, I almost want to apologize for saying that, but I think I do, because I think everybody does. I don't want to make videos like the Evil Land stuff anymore where I'm like, um, I'm going to tell you whether something's good or not. I don't feel like that has a ton of value. Um, I look back at the content I made in that era, and like, it just feels pretentious to me. I don't know. But, I think very subjective things, talking about stuff where I know that it's just what matters to me, trying to voice things that I have a hard time talking about, and just standard conversation, um, putting it in, thank you for, yeah, just, oh, rub all up on that mic arm, please. Stuff like the Who's Line video, stuff like the Life Aquatic video, I mean, my biggest realization has just been that uh, talking about good or bad in media is not intensely useful because it's a completely subjective field, but what is interesting and what can be helpful and can help us grow as people is to just talk about uh, the way that we personally intersected with media. Um, we all have intensely different lives and backgrounds and baggage, and that is going to affect the way that we uh, consume everything, and the same movie can mean something different to us. Uh, if we watch it a bit later or after a certain event or even in just like a different mood or with different people, um, it can completely change. And I think that stuff is really interesting to talk about. I think the biggest thing is just giving myself permission to just make stuff even if it's not great um, or not super highly produced, I guess. Because uh, my job now is making a lot of highly produced content a lot of the time, so it also makes it harder to get home and then open up the same editing software and stuff again. Yes, hi. Thank you. Sorry I have been gone for uh, so long. I've missed making things here. Hopefully you're excited to see more stuff from me. If you're only here because of Todd Howard, which um, I would estimate probably over half of my subscribers are, uh, honestly, uh, I am still planning to make the sequel to that. I have it planned out as a trilogy, and the second part has been written for years, and I just need to actually make it. Story of my life. I don't know what the next thing is going to be, but I'm going to uh, try to set aside at least a couple hours a week uh, where I just kind of shut off everything else and just focus on working on stuff for me. Um... Which might not necessarily mean things for this channel, but I think uh, a, a majority of my personal projects are things for this channel. So, yeah. I guess I'll see you soon. You're on my mouse.